Good morning. Does it feel good to breathe? <laughs> okay, so we have our registry book here today too. Please sign your name and just leave it at the end of the pew and they'll pick it up after the service. Father's Day is June the 20th and we would like to hear some fatherly advice your fathers have shared with you. Please consider submitting a picture of your father and or some fatherly advice to be included in a video tribute that will be shown during the morning service on Father's Day. The deadline for items to be included in the video is Friday, June the 11th. That's the same thing we did for Mother's Day. And uh, please check your bulletin for the other announcements. If anyone has an announcement they'd like to make. Pastor Ann has an announcement. I just wanted to remind you about the Clarity Baby Bottle Campaign. We still have a number of bottles left out there, I think. And I just wanted to emphasize this is a small thing. You just fill it with change. We're going to collect them on Father's Day and send them back. Clarity does so much that you wouldn't believe. I recommend taking a tour over there on 7th Street. They, um, they answer questions of young women, not necessarily so young, but who find themselves unexpectedly pregnant. They try to discourage them from getting an abortion and make sure that they know all of the alternatives. They also run a educational program in the schools to help students understand what it, sexual health really is all about. And they also run a counseling program for women who may have had an abortion and are regretting it. So they do a lot in this community and anything you can give put in that little baby bottle, whether it's change or bills or checks, they'll take anything. And we, we want to do them a good service because they do the community a good service. Are there any other announcements? Well, let's go to our opening prayer then. Wind of God, present since before creation, Fall on us now, whisper to us, shout to us, comfort and guide us. 
alight on us anew and revive our own spirits to love and serve. Amen. to worship, testify to the goodness of God, sing praise to God, testify to the love of God, sing praise to Christ, testify to the presence of the Holy Spirit, sing praise to the Spirit. Okay, please remain standing.
And now, will the children please come forward? Hi. Good to see y'all. Good to see. Okay. go. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story this morning about the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have heard the Holy Spirit called the Holy Ghost, but that's because a hundred years ago, ghost meant something different from what it means now. So the right way to speak it is the Holy Spirit, because he's not a ghost, he's a spirit. God's spirit. And God is definitely not dead. Yeah. He is in heaven and where else? I see a giraffe, yeah. All around us. The Holy Spirit is the part of God that is with us all the time. Well, let me tell you how that happened. Cool. Well, uh, the Holy Spirit used to just come to one person at a time. But on the day of Pentecost, that would be 50 days after Passover and about a week after Jesus went to heaven. You may get your giraffe. Yeah. So about a week after Jesus went up to heaven, all of his followers were together in one place, about 120 of them. And suddenly the place was filled with the sound of wind. But they didn't feel any wind. Can you make the sound? Good. That's good wind. Okay. So anyway, it was filled with the sound, but no wind. And suddenly, flames appeared over their heads. They didn't burn them. They just appeared over their heads. And they started talking in languages that were not the language they spoke. Like if you suddenly started speaking Japanese, or if you suddenly started speaking, mm -hmm. what would you want to, sp you already speak Spanish, a little bit. Japanese, okay, we'll stick with Japanese. Or Congolese, or German, or something different from what you speak, but they were all able to do it because of the Holy Spirit. And we have the Holy Spirit too. Now, sometimes the Holy Spirit has been seen, that is, sometimes when he came down uh, at Jesus' baptism, he was seen as a white, well, we don't know white, a dove. He came looking like a dove. But of course, 
when he came to the disciples, he looked like a flame. So I want you to find, let's see, that's down. So you're going to have to come up here for a minute. Come here. So sometimes he's a dove, sometimes he's a flame, sometimes he's a wind, and then you can't see him. It's all right. It's okay. The Holy Spirit is here and will invite you to come up. Can you see the very top of this window? Yeah. Oh, you can't see it, but what is it? The very, very top of the window. What is it? In what form? Mm -hmm. No? It's the circle up there. Look at the very, very top. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the circle. Uh-huh. What do you see? It's a circle. A bird. A bird. A bird. What kind of bird do you suppose that is? It's a dove. It's a dove. It's a dove. It's a dove with very long wings, which is good. Okay, how about sitting down again? And then I would like you to look at my, this is called a stole. This is what I got when they decided that I would be a real preacher. So, when you see it, do you find a dove there? Yeah, I see a dove. Mm-hmm. Good. And it says, Holy Spirit, uh huh. And do you see flames anywhere? Do yeah, you see right flames? There. Right there. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm black one, right there. Yeah, that's the clip for my microphone. Here are the flames. Now they're not over their heads; they're all around them. But the people are not burning up because it's not real fire; it's real spirit to set our hearts. We say set our hearts on fire. You know that doesn't mean real fire. I didn't quite catch that, but that's okay. <laughs> oh. An air hug, yes. Well, you know where else we see the people? The Holy Spirit is with every one of them. So when you give your people an air hug, Guess who else you're giving an air hug to? Holy the Holy Spirit. That's right. Can you can blink, yes. All right. Do you understand a little bit about the Holy Spirit? Yes, I understand. Well, God bless you and may the Spirit be with you always. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us all the time. Bless these children and give them Hope for a future with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Beloved three-in-one God, we lift up our hearts in praise to you. Beloved Creator, Blessed Redeemer, Fiery Spirit, you think and move as one. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. We've not always been the people you call us to be, but you forgive us and make us a holy people dedicated to you. Thank you for your great mercy, Lord, and for your grace. Beloved God, all over the world and here at home, there are people in soul-crushing poverty. Be present to them, bring them sustenance and aid, and help us to help them. Be present also to those who endure oppression or violence on a daily basis. Help us to dismantle such practices as human trafficking, child abuse, and slavery. Send us to those who need us, especially those who don't yet know you. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to spread the good news, just as you inspired the apostles on the day of Pentecost so long ago. Bless our nation and make it your own, and bless and protect our leaders. End political strife by helping us to listen to one another without judgment. 
We ask you to strengthen and inspire your church, the Church Universal, and the United Methodist Church, for we can do much more through connection than as individuals. And Lord, we raise to you all those on our continuing prayer list, especially our shut-ins and any who could not be with us today. Bless, inspire, and guide our children and the children of the world. Where they lack word of your love, let us demonstrate it. Where they lack safety, let us protect. Where they are hopeless, let us bring hope. All these things we pray along with the unspoken needs of our hearts. All glory and honor to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Hear us as we pray these words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And now here's something else that we haven't done in a while. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. We're very fortunate to have a place where we can gather and worship God and talk about Jesus. Here we worship, we remember, here we sing, and here we give. We give of whatever we have to support the work of the church and the upkeep of this place. Now the day of Pentecost has come, and we are all gathered together in this place. Will the ushers please come forward to collect the offering? As you see, our song is the Spirit Song, I think. Yes. Yes, the Spirit Song is number 347 or on the screen. John 
15, verses 26 through 27, and John 16, 4b through 15. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Please be seated. Today we meet someone new. Not new to us, perhaps, but new to Jesus' disciples. While Jesus was alive, he was always blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit, but his followers were not. To them, the Holy Spirit was someone from the Torah, someone who was both messenger for God and God himself. As God's messenger, the Holy Spirit interacted with Abraham, wrestled with Jacob, and fought alongside Joshua and Gideon. The Holy Spirit rested upon David and inspired the prophets who spoke in the power of the Spirit. But God's Spirit usually rested upon one individual at a time. You had to be very close to God personally to receive the Spirit, and it wasn't always comfortable when you did. By Jesus' time, the Holy Spirit was mostly a distant memory. Receiving it was something that happened to the ancestors, not something that happened in everyday first century life. But then it did. First, the angel Gabriel came to a young woman in Nazareth named Mary. He told her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. After seemingly passing from the popular imagination for centuries, the Holy Spirit was about to act in a way that could only be called miraculous. And the Holy Spirit is all over this story. When Mary greeted her cousin Elizabeth, the child who would become John the Baptist leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. When John was born, his father Zechariah could speak again and used his first speech to praise God. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. 
as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. And we're not finished yet. When the infant Jesus was presented in the temple, the Holy Spirit was there too. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. Suddenly, somewhat quietly but also strategically, the Holy Spirit was very busy. Twelve years later, who do you suppose led the boy Jesus into the temple? And 18 years after that, since we know the Spirit inspired the prophets, how did the word of God come to John, who spoke it in the wilderness? It was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. At Jesus' baptism, we know that when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is a little bit confusing because we believe that the Holy Spirit rested on Jesus from birth and here it is descending upon him in bodily form. I think maybe this was an outward demonstration of an inward grace. In other words, the dove was for the benefit of others, not Jesus. Jesus was already well aware of the Spirit. Finally, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Yes, Jesus was very well acquainted with the Holy Spirit. But as we see from our gospel reading for today, his followers were not. Oh, they'd read or heard the Torah, but they'd missed all the activity around Jesus' birth and baptism. The Holy Spirit was something that happened in the Hebrew scriptures, like the parting of the Red Sea. It wasn't something with which they were immediately familiar. So Jesus had the task of introducing the subject. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. The disciples were very sad because it seemed that Jesus was about to leave them. Jesus noticed this and told them, It's for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. That's puzzling, and I'm not sure what it tells us about the Spirit, except that perhaps Jesus couldn't send the Spirit while he was still on earth. You see, Western Christians believe that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. This seems to confirm that. Up until now, the Spirit has gone where the Father sent. Now, if he goes to the Father, Jesus, too, will be able to send the Spirit. And his intention is to send it out in a way that's never happened before. Not to rest on an individual or inspire a small group of prophets, but to rest on and empower all who believe in Jesus. If the Holy Spirit has been a spark in the past, now he's going to be a raging inferno. If he's been a gentle breeze, now he's going to be a hurricane. You get the idea. This is big. But for now, Jesus is more focused on the ability of the Holy Spirit to impart knowledge. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. 
But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. What truths do you think it was too hard for them to bear? Perhaps that they couldn't depend on what they'd been taught through their Jewish heritage? Because Jesus says when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. That could be it. It would be almost unbearable to learn that what you'd been taught growing up was all untrue. It's not that the scriptures were untrue, but that their interpreters had been off. The Pharisees taught that sin was failure to follow the law of Moses to the tiniest detail. They thought that righteousness was keeping those laws and above all being Jewish. And they thought that judgment would be based on how well the laws were followed. That's why they looked down on those who couldn't or didn't keep the law as well as they did. That's why they looked down on Samaritans and other foreigners. But Jesus taught that the commandments that were closest to God's heart were those about loving God and loving one another. This truth would become much clearer later as the Holy Spirit spread to those who were baptized in the name of Jesus regardless of their nationality or adherence to the law. Then, one day in Jerusalem, after he had ascended to heaven, Jesus' followers were all together in one place, and they suddenly and unexpectedly received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, manifest in the sound of wind and the appearance of fire. And to those very people of Jerusalem who barely tolerated foreign worshipers, they spoke in the tongues of many lands, welcoming those of many nations to believe, love, and spread the news of the Son of God. Their power and joy were so great and so convincing that 3,000 people in Jerusalem became Christ followers that day. Peter called it the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Not all Jews, you notice. Not just men. Not the rich. All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Where is the Holy Spirit these days? Here, with us, always available to us if we can overcome our fear to call on his power. Sometimes, especially when we sing, I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit so strongly that I almost can't breathe. But I'm afraid to call on that power. I like to preach without a manuscript. And I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit would give me the words. But I'm still stuck in the I'm not worthy mode, so I don't even try. Where is the spirit of truth in your life? Is it deep inside, quietly promoting those fruits that come as we embrace the truth of Christ? Those are, of course, Love, joy, peace, and the other six qualities we talked about as fruit of the Spirit. Is the Spirit of truth there in your heart, testifying to the truth of our faith and reminding you to love your neighbor as yourself? Is the Spirit of truth prompting you even now to reach outside your comfort zone and bring healing to those who are hurting and relief to those who are on the fringes of society. The Holy Spirit is very powerful, almost irresistible, and yet we resist. We don't like to be controlled by anything we perceive as outside forces, 
That would be downright un-American. But we are controlled by a number of forces outside ourselves. Public opinion, social media, broadcast news, print journalism, to name but a few. Wouldn't it be better to trust in the one who comes from Jesus, who we know loves us? Here's something you can be sure of. If you believe in Jesus, and especially if you've been baptized in his name, the Holy Spirit lives within you. But he's like a considerate guest who won't come out of his room unless you call him. If you call on him, you have the power to do miracles. You do, if only you have faith. There's the problem. We're blocked by our belief in impossibility. We're stymied by our own knowledge and rationality. We don't put our faith in faith. But Jesus has been human. Jesus knows we're blocked. So faith is the place we need to work. From Matthew 21, 21, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. It will be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. Exaggeration? Maybe. But the point was made. We've received the Holy Spirit. Anything is possible. Let us pray. Mighty Father, beloved Son, we long to be near you. Thank you for the wonderful gift you bestowed on that day of Pentecost so long ago. We long to believe your promises that we are yours and you have put your spirit within us. Give us access to that gift within and through faith and strengthen our faith. Teach us how to use your power for the building of your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And now another spirit hymn. It's number 393, Spirit of the Living God. Let us rise and sing out. what God puts on your heart. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the love of Christ Jesus through the awesome power of the Holy Spirit. Until we meet again. Amen.